Hi, I'm John Collins. Welcome to this special edition of Body Beautiful. We're very happy to welcome back Dr. Vicki Peterson, author of The Gluten Effect and an e-book as well. She was also nominated for Gluten-Free Doctor of the Year. Dr. Peterson is committed to increasing awareness of gluten intolerance. And before we get started, any advice we give you today, obviously you want to consult with your own physician, but welcome back, Dr. Vicki Peterson. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, now, last time you were here, we talked about how gluten can cause weight gain. Right. A lot of people were surprised by that. Uh, today, we're going after the gut in a whole different way. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we're going to talk about digestion. Uh huh. So, um, basically, digestive tract. What is it? Just the basic anatomy first. Yeah, you know, people think about digestion from the viewpoint of, I'm hungry, so let me <laughs> let me throw some stuff in there, but. What's interesting is that your skin is your largest organ and your skin and your gut are actually the same tissue. So when you're a little developing fetus, um, what happens is the outside folds in and becomes the tube that is your intestine. So that's the same tissue, which is, which is very interesting. And not only is the skin the largest organ, but your small intestine, as an example, has the surface area of a tennis court. <laughs> a tennis court? Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's an incredible amount of surface area. Exactly. It's folded. You know, you, you think of your intestines as sort of pipes like under your kitchen sink, right. but within those pipes, there are very small folds, almost like the blades of grass, going back to that tennis court analogy. And if every blade of grass, you know, was a fold, that's how you get that tremendous surface area. So it makes sense that we need that when I explain what digestion does, which is that, okay, so it goes in the mouth, we know that, then it gets sure. into the stomach, kind of churns it up a little bit, and then it goes into the small intestine. And that's where it should be broken down to very minuscule sizes, and then it permeates out into the blood, and the blood brings it to all your cells. So every time you eat, you have 10 trillion cells that need to be fed. <laughs> 10 trillion cells. That sounds like a lot. Yep. So hence that surface area, right? You now see the importance and the need for that. So if you're having any digestive problems, to some degree, that is not working. So you're not feeding your cells. So then you start thinking about the fact that the cells are not being fed well, how could things possibly work properly in your body? So uh, things can go wrong there, and that's the point. There's a, there's a there's a lot of surface area. There's a lot of things to go wrong. It's so it's a protective layer, and it also help, it's the way we gather nutrients. So that, these are the two main things here, right? Exactly, and and it's it's fascinating because not only does does it allow good nutrition to come out and, and as we said, deliver it to the cells, but bad things, like if you ingested an organism that wasn't your friend, like a parasite or something, right. it actually has the ability to keep that in and just go, yeah, you're out the other end. <laughs> you're not gaining access to the body. Everybody when healthy, moving through. Yeah. yeah, so it has almost, it has a gatekeeper system, which is pretty phenomenal, actually. So uh, you have a, a number of case studies we're gonna talk about in the yeah. show uh, today. So um, the first one has to do with IBS, and that's, a, that's something that went wrong. Tell me a little sure. bit about this person. So IBS stands for irritable bowel syndrome, and um, it, it actually encompasses two common symptoms that go along with digestion, which is uh, when things are going wrong, mostly diarrhea, but then a little bit of constipation, and, and but mostly these people suffer from uh, very, very frequent diarrhea. So this particular woman uh, was in uh, her late 50s, she was 58, she'd been suffering for eight years with 20 plus bowel movements a day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's debilitating. It, absolutely. And she was housebound. She was housebound. As a matter of fact, the only way she could come into the clinic, she'd been under care, she was actually taking drugs for the problem, it wasn't helping, she was still housebound. And, the, and when she decided to come to the clinic because she heard we get to the root cause of the problem, she didn't eat for 24 hours. Wow, just to make that, it to the clinic. That's the only way she can leave her house. So how did this case turn out? What, what were you able to do for her? So, so amazing, you talked about gluten earlier, which is a protein found in wheat, rye, and barley, and it's the most common food sensitivity we see. And if you think of what goes in your gut, it's food. Yeah. So we very commonly find food sensitivities, gluten leading the list. For her, that was the case. Within about four days of getting off gluten, she was down to one bowel movement a day. After how many years of 20 a day? Eight, eight. eight years. years. Eight years of being housebound four days later. So to say she was ecstatic and furious. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, yeah. right. And it's been months, you know, I checked on her before we met today just to uh, make sure that I can have a current current evaluation and she's doing great. And most doctors will tell you if you have IBS that you just have to live with that. Watch what you eat a little bit, but basically you gotta live with that. That there's no cure. And, and we absolutely find that not to be the case. And, and there's one thing, sometimes I wish I could just, you know, 
gather all the IBS people because she's not the first that we've had, certainly after 25 years of being in practice, and she's not the first that was, was housebound and debilitated. And one for one, we find that if they follow the program, we handle their IBS. And a lot of times, and I was just talking to a friend of mine who, who used to suffer from that mm -hmm. and got gluten-free and yeah. is now you know, no, not symptomatic. Uh, he was saying he would do exactly the wrong thing. He would do comfort food, which was bread, you know, or something light like that, and it was exactly the wrong thing because bread has gluten in it, and though it would emotionally feel good, he would be making the symptoms worse. Right, and, and but doctors tell you to do that. They, they say, oh, you know, if you have heartburn, excess acid, we'll eat something that's very mild and we'll, you know, and they, what do they tell you to do? Bread and, and milk. Right. which are the two most common things <laughs> we find people with, yeah. are sensitive to. So some other common problems are, are uh, stomach aches, just good old-fashioned stomach aches. And by the way, moms and grandparents, listen up. Uh, children with stomach aches, there is a reason, so don't let them continue to suffer because I can't tell you how many adults, when we solve their problem, they say, you know, I've been like this since I was a kid. Started out with stomach aches, and then I got to whatever it was, yeah, heartburn, yeah, constipation. There a number of things, yeah. burping, passing gas, feeling bloated, tired after eating, um, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, um, all of these things. If they're happening a lot, that is not normal. Yeah, happening at all. I mean, people say, well, you know, you eat a meal and you feel bloated for a while. It's like, well, you shouldn't. Oh, really? <laughs> It's, it's their normal, but it's not the normal way to be. Right, and, and the other thing that really gets in the way of this, and the reason I wanted to talk about it, is that people don't like to talk about I'm bloated or I have gas right. or I'm constipated, you know? Um, they're a little shy about it. And doctors sometimes, I find, uh, don't ask a pertinent question. So if I say to a patient, you know, are you constipated? And they say no, then I follow up with, well, how often do you move your bowels? And then they say, well, twice a week, and, I, <laughs> and then I inform them, guess what? Yeah, yeah, That's you, called constipation. And, and people go, oh, you know, I've had patients say, well, you know, I, I want to mention, I'm sure you don't want to hear about this. And I'm like, no, I so want to hear about this. And then I explain to them why, because it's such an important facet of your body. You can't be healthy if your digestive tract is not working well. And then they relax and go, okay, so here's now, what's happening with it, me. Yeah. And somebody's finally listening. So uh, what's wrong with just taking a pill? I mean, there are tons and tons of pills over the counter. There's uh, antacids are one of the top selling things mm -hmm. over the counter. What's yeah. wrong with just taking a pill to deal exactly. with Exactly, it's a perfect question because that is the way we treat it. You know, it's, um, you said, antacid for, for heartburn or, or, you know, fiber for constipation. If you took it once and you never had the problem again, that would be getting to the root cause. But if you take it and you have to take it and you have to take it and when you don't take it, it comes back, you're not getting to the root cause of the problem, and that root cause is preventing your cells from being fed, you see? So if you understand it from that perspective that it's just a Band-Aid, this is a Band-Aid, and underneath is a volcano brewing, and that volcano of poor digestive function is creating disease. I mean, if, if, if you got bloated, and then you could say to yourself, hey, I see we're bloated. You know, we had a text message thing going, right? Which <laughs> doesn't work yet, but I fantasize about it. So, you know, you text and say, see, we've got bloating, and uh, what's up with that? And the body's like, yeah, you know, we're not turning food into fuel down here. You know, it's just sitting there. And by the way, you know, the, the immune system is now saying cancer cell just got by, and it couldn't fight it because you didn't feed it. Wow. Then it would get your attention. But that's what's happening. That's no exaggeration. So we're going to talk about what all of that means, what all of these symptoms mean coming up. But uh, first, uh, at the Health Now Medical Center, there's a team of doctors that work towards one goal. That is isolating and treating the root causes of your health problems. Now, the vast majority of the time, those problems have at the root a digestive issue. Obvious symptoms like heartburn, bloating, gas, diarrhea, all these are easy to assess. In some cases, the reason underlying the problem is a lack of ability to turn food into fuel. We've been talking about that. Either way, normalizing the function of the digestive tract goes a long way to restoring your health. If you'd like to get free health analysis from the doctors who pioneered the study of gluten, you can call right now, 408-733-0400. Obviously, they can't take everybody for free, but right now, the first 50 callers will get a free health analysis. You know, gluten can play such a strong role in creating poor health. It's just smart to rule that out while you're getting at the root cause of your health problems. You're going to spend half an hour with a doctor at no charge. It's a chance to see if they can help you with your health issues. You can even call and make an appointment for a family member or a friend. It's 408-733-0400. And when we come back, what do all of those symptoms really mean? What's really going on inside all that gas and gurgling? The ugly truth when we return on Body Beautiful.
The information and advice given on this program is for general informational purposes only. For medical advice on specific treatments, medical professionals should be consulted. You should not initiate a course of treatment without consulting a qualified doctor. The opinions expressed on the program are those of the guests and not those of Cron TV, its management, employees, or advisors. Welcome back to Body Beautiful. We're talking with one of the leading experts in the field of gluten intolerance, Dr. Vicki Peterson. She's the author of The Gluten Effect, co-creator of Health Now Medical Center. It's great to have you back on the program. Thank you. Uh, any advice we give folks? Obviously, they want to consult a physician before they get started. All right, we've had the commercial to get ready to hear about the truth here. Um, what does all this stuff mean? Let's just start with bloating. What, what is bloating? What's going on when someone's feeling bloated? Sure. So when you eat, the whole digestive process should begin, and that food should just be starting to be broken down. With bloating, it's not. It's just sitting there, and the body is not utilizing it for whatever reason. It didn't like what you ate. It's been chronically irritated, so the, the enzymes aren't there to break it down. But that feeling of bloating is not normal. It's not normal, and it's, it's a symptom that something serious is going on in there. Absolutely. It's a malfunction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, what about, uh, what, what's gas? So if you're having too much gas, what does that actually Right, mean? what it means is that the food is bring, being broken down, but it's not being assimilated, it's not being taken out of that small intestine, so uh, it's just putrefying, for lack of a better word. Just, you know, it's going rotten in your, in your intestines, and so it's making gas. Just like if you ever find an old Tupperware container at the back <laughs> of the fridge oh. <laughs> that's a little bloated, yeah, it's, Same you know, idea. with a trap gas, sure, because it's a trap system, you know, we only have the up or the down, so you pass gas up or down um, but the, but the fact that that the gassiness is there shows that the food is just kind of rotting so you're not getting the benefit of it Wow All right, now we talked a, a little bit earlier about actually what um, what would constitute constipation you know right. you need a bowel movement a day essentially so. yeah one to two large so if you're not getting to that be graphic. <laughs> to be graphic we won't get too graphic honest but. and graphic so what if you're not moving food through what is that really a symptom of what why would your system stop moving food through? it's, it's interesting because the small intestine is 23 feet long and that's where all the absorption should take place as we mentioned but then there's the large intestine which is kind of like a picture frame around the outside <laughs> a picture and, frame yeah <laughs> yeah well it does it frames it's the little small okay. intestine um, you have to be into anatomy which I am uh, but what happens is that really all that should be left leaving that small intestine intestine is fiber that's not digestible or toxins. So, so the large intestine doesn't do much absorption. It's just really a receptacle for, we don't want that, so thank you, please get rid of it, Clean right? up on aisle three. Here exactly. We go. <laughs> um, but if the food isn't being absorbed, then too much is actually being dumped into that large intestine, good food that should have been absorbed out to your cells. And so because so much is being dumped into the large intestine, everything slows down and you get constipated. Wow, so you're actually just not being able to digest the food. It's right. Your body just cannot physically process the food. And so you're the overwhelming the large intestine with too much food stuffs so that shouldn't be coming its way. Okay, we talked a little bit about uh, IBS before, but what, what is that? What's actually going on there? Well, um, let's talk about diarrhea, which is the major okay. component right. of it, because what happens with diarrhea is kind of brilliant. So what the body is saying is that what it's detecting is coming in is really a toxin, and it says, oh. how, how quickly can we get this out of here? So it dumps water into the small intestine and just moves it through. That's what diarrhea is. So the problem is, of course, the body's detecting what you just ate as a toxin, and then, of course, anything that could have been absorbed, very little is being absorbed because it's just rushing through. The whole digestive process should take 24 hours. So that could be if your body's reading gluten as a bad thing. Right. That's, that's what's happening. Just there. evacuation. It's and, it's, and it's amazing from the sense of how the body can protect itself. It can just rush water in there and just go, well, let's get out let's of here. You know? So it's brilliant, but, of course, then you're being, you know, malabsorption is occurring. You're not getting nourished. What about heartburn? Heartburn is, your stomach is a bag of acid, it's supposed to be, right. um, but the acid is supposed to stay in the stomach. So if you're eating something that you're having a reaction to, the stomach just spasms and it shoots that acid up your tube, which is called the esophagus. That or an infection in the stomach, both of those will give you heartburn. So to just, to just lessen the acid in the stomach, and this is very key because that stomach needs to be that acidic in order to break down the food, to present it to the small intestine in, in the right form, 
And so if all you do is put an antacid in there, you're lessening the ability of the stomach to turn the food into the right particle size. You see, so you're setting up just a, a conveyor of Failure. ill health. <laughs> Failure, exactly. So well said, well said. That'll lead to constipation, it sounds like, if you can't process right. the food. Right, you so, got you know, it, you <laughs> got it. All right, so if I'm yeah. tired after eating, now, that, that's not all that uncommon, right? So your blood goes to your intestines. So what's, where does the, where does it jump off into a we, real we problem? You know, it's funny, because it's, it's just one of those common things that people think it's normal because it's common. Because if you th think about it, you're hungry, you need to be fueled and if it's good fuel the cells should just go thank you thank you thank you and energy levels should come up so what happens if energy level goes down right. what does that mean it wasn't good fuel so that food was a burden to your system uh -huh. instead of this effortless like thank you thank you thank you so it's not like after Thanksgiving where you got that tryptophan crash. Well, it's different. <laughs> it's different. The tryptophan is an amino acid yeah. in turkey that gives you that kind of, okay. Yeah. And then we tend to overeat and that will overburden the system. But on a day-to-day -day level, Thanksgiving aside, um, you shouldn't feel that, you know, let me go to sleep. So all of these are, are clues that your system is not working exactly. correctly. Exactly, and that's why I wanted to do this show with you, is I, is I really want to increase awareness that these are clues that have to, don't ignore them and don't mask them with a Band-Aid, do something about them. Do something about them, at, and you can go see the folks at Health Now Medical Center. There's a team of doctors that work towards one goal that's isolating and treating the root causes of your health problems. The vast majority of the time, those problems have at their root, believe it or not, a digestive issue. If you'd like to get a free health analysis from the doctors who pioneered the study of gluten, you can call right now, 408-733-0400. Obviously, they can't take everybody for free, but right now, the first 50 callers will get a free health analysis. This filled up pretty fast on the last show, so you probably want to get off the couch or just grab your cell phone and call. Gluten can play such a strong role in creating poor health. It's smart to rule that out while getting to the root of the other health problems. So you're going to spend half an hour with a doctor at no charge. It's a chance to see if they can help you with your health issues. You can even make an appointment for a family member or a friend. It's 408-733-0400. When we come back, the vitamin question. Who needs vitamins? How much calcium do you need for healthy bones? The answer is gonna surprise you. That's just ahead on this special edition of Body Beautiful with Dr. Vicki Peterson. John Collins, welcome back to Body Beautiful. Dr. Vicki Peterson is here talking about all things that go rumbly in your tumbly, to quote Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Very um, cute. Some of these things have to do with your immune system. It is, how much is actually housed in the digestive tract, your immune system? Yeah, 80% of it is housed in that small intestine. Wow. So that's another critical aspect of why we have to keep it healthy, because your immune system is what kills cancer cells and bacteria and viruses and, and all these things that if, if it's not doing that well, there's no way you can be healthy. So a bad digestive tract, poorly managed digestive tract leads to other disease as well, in, in addition to just being bad for you, getting all the nutrients that you need. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so uh, what does this have to do with gluten intolerance? It, frequently, you know, we hear that these things are, are tied together. So how does that work? Really twofold. In, in both those aspects that we talked about, one, gluten is coming in as, as a toxin, really. So it's compromising your ability to turn food into fuel. So your cells are not being well fed uh, because it's doing damage to the small intestine. And it also weakens the immune system. So it's a double whammy. Uh, it weakens the immune system because, once again, every time it comes in, the immune system has to attack it like a bad guy and if you think about how often people eat bread products etc yeah. <laughs> uh, as the years pass that immune system get, gets weaker and weaker and weaker so obviously we're not eating as well as we used to no. or, or as as we should so what should people be taking vitamins on a daily basis absolutely I mean we always start with the diet and you know somebody says should I change my diet or should I take a vitamin I'll say you have to change your diet, right. but I'd also like them to take a vitamin, so it's really both. And uh, it's, it's critical that you get one that's absorbable so we don't have, um, you know, just it coming in and leaving in the same form. Right. I, Americans have really expensive urine for right. all, all the wrong reasons. Um, I know that Health Now Medical recommends supplements from Metagenics, and, and this is not an over-the-counter um, vitamin. You guys have to recommend that. Yeah, they sell to clinicians only because it's that high a caliber, really, so it's not something a doctor needs to prescribe it. Uh, but there's a, a multiple that we work with they, that they have, and uh, it's just highly absorbable and, and nourishing, and you especially need that with digestive problems, although I think everybody needs it. And it's pretty inexpensive. It's only like a buck a day, and, and these guys are up on their research. They've been in the business 25 years. Absolutely. Hundreds of products out there. 
cutting edge uh, research, so they're, they're aware of all the new stuff. So that's why you guys work with them. That's why we work with them because you, you need somebody who's staying at that cutting edge and really changing their formulations to keep up with what we now know is true. And really quickly, um, calcium. People have the wrong idea about calcium. How much do you really need? We used to think you needed a lot. We now appreciate that bones are made up a lot more of a lot more minerals than just calcium. So you really need a good balance, and and actually you get calcium very well from uh, dark green le leafy vegetables and a good multiple. You should need necessarily more than that. Uh, great information. If you'd like to get a free health analysis from doctors who actually pioneered the study of gluten, you can call right now, 408-733-0400. Obviously, they can't take everybody for free, but right now, the first 50 callers will get a free health analysis. Gluten can play such a strong role in creating poor health, it's smart to just rule that out as the root cause of your health problems. You'll spend a half hour with a doctor at no charge. It's your chance to see if they can help you with your health issues. You can even make an appointment for a friend or a family member. Just call 408-733-0400. Mm -hmm. Coming up, food is information. What does that mean? We'll explain. Coming up, fun body. Welcome back, I'm John Collins. We've been talking about how your body digests food and what happens when that goes haywire, and Dr. Vicki Peterson is explaining it all. What, what does it mean that food is information? Well, the food you eat is telling your body what to do, and if you don't like what it's, what it's telling you, meaning how you feel, then we've really got to change what we're putting in, which is why we've been talking about food sensitivities like gluten. And you've got to find out if you're gluten intolerant, and uh, lab tests are the best way to go. There's been a recent uh, increase in ability to have sensitive lab tests. Cyrex Labs is a lab that does that. Um, not affiliated with them, but I use them because they're very good. They're, they're good folks. So, Absolutely. so from the top to the bottom, what do people need to do with steps in order? I mean, find out if you have a problem, because you know we've talked about the fact that these things are not normal, so now you know. Uh, you have to find a doctor that's going to help you get to the root cause, that really can think with that. Find out if you have these food sensitivities or not. Do you have any infections? Uh, do you have any toxicities? Is, is your immune system healthy? Remember, 80% is in the gut. Right. So all those things have to be found. Wow. And we these, can help. The folks at Health Now Medical can definitely help you figure that out. If yeah. you'd like to get a free health analysis from the doctors who pioneered the study of gluten, you can call them right now. The number is 408 733 0400. Obviously, they can't take everybody for free, but right now, the first 50 callers will get a free health analysis. And you can find out how gluten can play such a strong role in creating poor health. It's just smart to just rule that out so you can get at the root of all your problems. It's a chance to see if they can help you with your health issues. You can even, you know, make an appointment for a family member or a friend. Just give them a call. The number is 408 733 0400. Thank you so much for coming and seeing us. Thank you. Come back. Absolutely. I'd love to. Thank you. The information and advice given on this program is for general informational purposes only. For medical advice on specific treatments, medical professionals should be consulted. You should not initiate a course of treatment without consulting a qualified doctor. The opinions expressed on the program are those of the guests and not those of Cron TV, its management, employees, or advisors.